Hello everyone, it's Red Saber here from Saber C++, and today we're going to be learning about the serial monitor and a couple more input modules you can use with Arduino. If you want to follow along, I've put a few links in the description so you can get what you need. First, let's take a look at serial communication between the computer and the Arduino. In the Arduino IDE, we can open up the serial monitor by clicking this little magnifying glass button up here. There's nothing in it yet because it receives input from any Arduino boards plugged into the computer. If you haven't connected your Arduino board yet, go ahead and connect it. Set up serial communication on the Arduino. We'll write serial.begin in the setup function with our baud rate, in this case 9600, in parentheses. The baud rate is the speed at which signals are sent between the computer and the Arduino. We'll have to specify it both on the Arduino and in the serial monitor right here. We can pick any of these values, but it's very important that they match so that the computer and the Arduino are both attempting the same speed of communication. Then a message, we can simply type serial.print and then put our message inside the parentheses. We can print as many messages as we want, and they'll simply be printed out in the serial monitor one after another. Let's upload our code and try it out. As you can see, it printed out both our messages, but they're both on the same line, which makes it a little difficult to read. To tell the Arduino that it should create a new line after a message, we replace the print function with a print line function, like this, println. The print line function tells the Arduino to print out your message and then create a new line afterward. Let's see how it works. As you can see here, my first message is on the same line as the stuff it sent before. It only creates a new line after the message, so that each successive message will be on a new line. We can also use these serial print statements in other places in our code, such as in the loop function, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's take a look at the rotary encoder. It looks a bit like a potentiometer, but it operates much differently. Rather than having a set range, you can rotate it around as many times as you want. However, it's a bit less precise. Mine also has a button that you can click down. Let's wire it up. First, I'll connect a black wire from the ground pin on the rotary encoder to one of the ground pins on the Arduino. Next, I'll connect a red wire from the plus pin on the rotary encoder to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. Now that we've supplied power to our encoder, we need to add a couple of wires to read the data from it. First, I'll connect an orange wire from the DT pin on the encoder to port A0 on the Arduino. Next, I'll connect another wire from the CLK pin on the rotary encoder to port A1 on the Arduino. That's all the wiring we need to do, so let's hop over to the computer and get coding. To control the rotary encoder, we're going to need to download a library, which is a group of code files that other people have written and made available for the community to use. I've put the link to this page in the description so you can simply select the latest version of the library and download it. In the Arduino IDE, we can go to Sketch, Include Library, and Add .zip Library. Here we can go to our Downloads folder and select the Rotary Encoder library we just downloaded. If it asks you if you'd like to overwrite an existing library, then go ahead and do it because this is the most updated version. Now that the library is installed, let's go ahead and add it to our sketch by going to Sketch, Include Library, and then selecting the Rotary Encoder Library, which we just added. You can see you put a line at the top that will tell the computer to include the library when we put this code on the Arduino. It'll also allow us to use the various functions and objects that the writers of the library created. First, I'm going to declare a couple of variables that will keep track of the ports the Rotary Encoder is connected to. First, I'll create one called DT pin and set it to A0 because that's where we connected the wire from the DT pin. I'll also create one called CLK pin and set it to A1. Next, I'll create an integer called pause, short for position, which I'll set to 0. We'll adjust this variable using the encoder so that we can see what the encoder is doing. The last thing to do is create an encoder object. Like the, with the variables above, we first need to specify a type, which in this case, is rotary encoder. 
Then we need to specify a name. In this case, I'll just call it encoder. Instead of simply setting it equal to an integer value like we've done above, we'll actually need to provide multiple values to construct the object. We need to provide the values for the two pins that we've added above, DT pin and CLK pin, and we need to provide a latch mode. Thankfully, the library includes several latch modes, and we can access one like this. This basically tells the Arduino that we want to get a latch mode from the rotary encoder. And the latch mode that we want to get is TWO03. In the setup function, let's begin serial communications using serial.begin and specifying a baud rate of 9600. In the loop function, we need to tell our encoder object to update its values with the values of the actual encoder. Thankfully, our library has a handy built-in function called tick which does just that. After this, let's create an integer called new pause, which will set to the position of the encoder, which has just been updated. We could print out the position of the encoder every time the loop function runs, but it'll be easier to read in the serial monitor if we only print it out when it changes. To do this, we'll check if the new position is not equal to the old position. In C++, the exclamation point is the symbol for not. So, if the position has changed, let's print out position, and then the new position. We also need to make sure to update the pause variable to the new position. Let's upload our code and see how it works. As you can see, it's printing out the positions. However, they're all on the same line. So let's change the second print statement to a print line statement and try it again. With the Arduino connected to our computer, we can see that the position is adjusted as we rotate our rotary encoder. Turning it clockwise raises the position, and turning it counterclockwise lowers it. But that's not all we can do with this rotary encoder. Let's make it so that when we press the button on the encoder, we reset the position to zero. To read when the button on the encoder is pressed, all we have to do is connect a wire from the SW pin on the encoder to one of the digital pins on the Arduino. I'll use port 3. At the top, let's add a button pin variable that will set to 3, as that's where we connected the button wire. Let's add a variable called button is up, which will set to true. We use this to determine if the button was just pressed. In the loop function, we can add a new if statement down at the bottom. The first thing to check is if the button is pressed. The button on the encoder is actually set up backwards of how buttons usually are, so it normally lets electricity flow through it. But if it's pressed, it'll be low. If the button is pressed and the button was up, the last time we checked, then we'll reset the position of the encoder back to zero using encoder.setPosition0. We can also print out that we're resetting the position using serial.printline reset position. And we should set button is up to false because now the button is down. The last thing to check is if the button pin is high. If it is, then the button is no longer pressed, so we should set button is up to true. This is an else if statement because the button can't be both high and low at the same time. Let's upload our code and see how it works. And now we can move the position up and down, even into the negatives, and if we press the button on the encoder, it resets the position to zero. Speaking of buttons, if this video has been helpful to you so far, please tap the like button. This is our joystick. As you can see, it has two potentiometers which it uses to read the rotation of the joystick on both axes. It also has a button to detect if it's pressed. Let's wire it up. First, I'll connect a black wire from the ground pin on the joystick to one of the ground pins on the Arduino. And a red wire from the 5 volt pin on the joystick to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. The VRX and VRY pins on the joystick allow us to read where on each axis the joystick is. 
I'll connect an orange wire from the VRX pin to port A0 on the Arduino. It needs to be an analog port because each axis is going to give us a range of values, not just 0 or 1. Next, I'll connect a blue wire from the VRY pin to port A1 on the Arduino. This will give us our Y axis. That's all the wiring we need to do. Let's hop over to the computer and get coding. First, I'll create variables for the two pins, the X axis pin and the Y axis pin. The X axis pin is A0 and the Y axis pin is A1. In the setup function, I'll start serial communications using serial.begin and I'll enter a baud rate of 9600. In the loop function, let's get the values of each axis. I'll create a temporary variable called X value and set it to the value we read from the x axis pin. I'll do the same thing with a variable called y value and the y axis pin. Let's start by printing out the x and y values to the serial monitor. I'd like to print them out like this x colon and then whatever the x value is, then y colon whatever the y value is. To do that, I'll start by printing x colon space. Then I'll print out the x value. Then we need to print out the y colon space, but I'm also going to add a space before the y so that there's a space after the x number. Lastly, we'll use a print line statement to print out the y value. This will make sure that the next time the loop function runs, it starts on a new line. Let's upload our code and see what happens. As you can see, if we move the joystick around, the x and y values change, and they're nicely formatted in the serial monitor, so we can see them pretty easily. However, it doesn't let us visualize the position of the joystick very well, so let's improve it a little bit. What I'd like to do is create a 3x3 grid of zeros, something like this. Then we can put an X where the joystick is, so if the joystick's in the center, the X will be in the center. If the joystick's straight up, the X will be in the top center, and so on. First, let's just create a single column, using the Y value to select where the X should go among the three rows. We know each axis goes from 0 to 1023, so let's say the bottom section is from 0 to 350. So if the y value is less than 350, then we'd like to print out three lines. The top two lines will each contain a 0, and the bottom line will contain an x. And there we go. The next thing to check is if the y value is greater than 650 because that will be our top section. I'll copy these three lines down to there, and then we'll put an X in the top section and zeros below. If the value isn't less than 350 and it isn't greater than 650, then it must be in the middle section. So we can simply use an else statement, and if that's the case, then we can simply put the X in the middle with a zero above and below. These values are coming in very quickly, so in order to make it easier to see, let's add a delay for a tenth of a second, or 100 milliseconds, and let's print a line to separate each column from the next. And there we go. Now we have a little column that tells us where the joystick is on the y-axis. Let's expand it to the full 3x3, so that we can get a good visualization of how the joystick is moving. First. Let's create our own custom function. The first thing we need to set is a return type, which in this case is void because we don't want to return anything from this function. Next, we'll have our function's name, which in this case is print x row, as we'll be printing out the row that has the x in it and putting the x in the proper position according to the x axis value. Then we'll have a set of parentheses and then braces, inside of which is our function. For this function, we'll need the x value. So let's cut that from up there and put it down here. Then, let's do the same thing we did with the y value, but with the x value. So first, we'll check if the x value is less than 350. And if it is, then we'll print out a line with two zeros and then an x. The x is all the way to the right, because the way the joystick works, the x-axis starts on the right, and increases towards the left. For our second section, we'll do else if the x value is greater than 650, and if it is, then we'll print out a line starting with x and then having two zeros. 
If it isn't in either of those categories, then it must be in the middle. So the remaining case will print out a line with a 0, then an x, and then a 0. Now we're printing out where our x is based on the x-axis. In order to call this function, we need to type it out up above. Now that we have this function to print out a whole row with the x in it, we don't need to print out a single x anymore. We also need to expand these from one zero to three zeros. Now it'll print out a grid with two rows of three zeros and then the bottom row with the x in its proper location. We can do the same thing for the remaining two sections, putting the print x row in place of the x and expanding each of the zeros to be three zeros, a full row, instead of just one. That's all there is to it. Let's upload our code and see how it works. Perfect, now we have a three by three grid with the X representing where our joystick is. It's a pretty good visualization. These are just a couple of the input devices you can use with Arduino. If you'd like to learn about more, check out my channel, Saber C++. Thanks for watching.